Hi everyone, I'm the opposite of Bernie. I prepared my slides yesterday. So, but he knew it by heart. He lied to us. I, I but didn't have time to learn it, so bear with me. Um, so my name is Jose Navarro. Uh, this is Brian Khalid. We are the ML platform team at Cookpad uh, uh, here in Bristol. And we're going to talk about our recipe to automate the deployment of uh, models into shared GPU uh, infrastructure. Very long title. Um, so, uh, Troy and I gave a talk recently at KubeCon Europe. Um, uh, for whoever who doesn't know what KubeCon is, it's the conference about Kubernetes. And we talk about how we use an open source tool from NVIDIA called uh, Triton Inference Server to uh, improve three areas of our um, inference uh, infrastructure, which is basically cost, performance, and user experience, and the reasons why that was important. Um, um, and today we want to share uh, with you um, the recipe uh, for helping your ML engineers to be able to collaborate on the experimental uh, phase of ML, um, being able to track the results and and then track the uh, being able to control the life cycle of their models uh, end to end from a single uh, tool. As every good recipe, it starts with a story. So let me tell you a little bit of story about Cookpad. Uh, so Cookpad is the global largest uh, community uh, of uh, home cooking lovers. Uh, we are building, uh, we're uh, making every day cooking fun. And why are we doing that? Uh, so the act of eating has a major impact in everyone's uh, health, uh, physical and mental health. And, um, and we believe at Cookpad that there is a big difference between creators and, and consumers. Uh, when you are creating, so you are cooking more often, um, you usually become more curious about the ingredients, where they come from, if they are in season, and how they change the taste if they are not. And when people, when people uh, become more curious, they, they care about the decisions that they make. And when they care about the decisions, they tend to do better decisions uh, that impact not only the, uh, the health, but also the environment. Um, so a little bit about the Cookpad communities. We are available in more than 70 countries and support more than 30 languages. We have uh, around 100 million users every month using the app and more than 6 million recipes in the app. Uh, in the app itself, you can uh, search ingredients that are in season. You can follow great uh, authors like Hiroko, one of my recent favorites. And uh, you can also search by popular dishes or type of cooking or a specific dish, etc. So, um, so let's come back to the title. So, um, recipe to automate the deployment of your models into shared EPU infrastructure. Uh, so, Brian and I talk a little bit more in details about why it's important um, to be able to deploy models into share. GPU and how it helps um, the performance and the cost efficiency. But um, uh, let me give you a quick summary. Um, um, ML is more accessible than ever. Uh, with the recent um, tools and practices from MLOps, uh, more and more MLs are uh, deploying things into production instead of working on the corner, building batch jobs. And more and more services are build um, running inference in a uh, live inference that require low latency for better user experience. And on the other hand, um, more models, more complex models are available with services like Hugging Face. So you have like massive uh, services. And if you want to run those services um, under low latency, the requirements of running those models in GPU comes quite quickly. And there are some challenges in Kubernetes running uh, inference in GPU that I can quickly talk about uh, a bit later. Uh, on the other side, I want to talk about automation, because I said more and more ML teams are working embedded in product uh, teams. Um, product requires quick iteration, uh, as Bernie was talking before. 
And um, the more tools we can help them with so that they can squeeze the, the timeline between uh, ideation and something deployed in production reliably, uh, the better so that they can make more impact in product. So uh, enough of our story. Um, let's go into the uh, recipe. So we're going to need three ingredients. We're going to need Triton Inference Server. Uh, we're going to need MLflow and a teaspoon of uh, Python sidecar. But just remember that recipes are just the beginning of the story. Um, making it yours is part of the fun of cooking. So you might choose a different ingredient or swap something else. Um, let's start with um, Triton Inference Server. So have I said already that we gave a talk in crypto? Maybe. Uh, no. Have a look. Uh, the link is on the description of this talk, so you can have a look into more details about why Triton Inference Server is great. But let me give you a quick summary. Um, let's say that we went to deploy a model um, in CPU. And this is uh, under Kubernetes context. Uh, so we reserve some CPU and memory resources, and we deploy our model, uh, which utilize most of those resources, hopefully, um, so that our cluster, it, it leads to um, healthy, uh, highly utilized uh, resources. Okay, so that model is in production. Now, let's say that we want to deploy another one. Well, since resources, CPU resources are, are um, compactable uh, on Kubernetes, you can basically request a portion of that CPU and that model can be, uh, or that service that is running that model can be uh, scheduled in the same node. So suddenly your ML team has deployed a new model, you add in more value to your business and the cost of the infrastructure is roughly the same, so happy days. But let's say that we want to deploy this massive transformers, hugging face, blah, 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 multilingual, and we need GPU because it's absolutely required that it runs under 100 milliseconds. No problem. I'll deploy it to GPU. Uh, well, there is, a, there is a tiny problem that on Kubernetes, you cannot request a fraction of a GPU. So you have to reserve the whole GPU which means money. Um, but let's say that the feature is worth it, and then we deploy it, we pay the price, and then our uh, product team got a great idea to deploy a different type of feature, and then we end up requiring deploying a different model. What do we do? Yep, we have to request another GPU. And a decent GPU in our cloud provider costs about $3 an hour, which uh, will take you to $2,000 a month. And if you think about the context of Cookpad, we have 70 countries, 30 languages supported. So there is a slightly low probability that we can develop one feature with one model that performs well everywhere. So we, for every feature, we usually need to train a few models uh, or for different regions, et cetera, et cetera. So this was a problem. So we needed a solution where we could run models in GPU that potentially can, become, uh, can come from different ML frameworks because we don't want to log our ML teams to use just TensorFlow or PyTorch. So we want something that can host multiple ML frameworks and run in GPU. So I don't know if you have experience working with uh, TensorFlow serving or PyTorch serving. So it's kind of like the same idea. You have multiple models and then the server decide what model is using to run the inference. But in our case, we needed like something that works with multiple ML frameworks as well. As well and running in GPU. So, um, and by the way, if you're thinking about uh, using uh, multi-GPU nodes, it doesn't scale because it costs, this node costs four times the cost of one GPU. So it doesn't work that way. So uh, Triton works very well with this. Uh, and again, there is other benefits uh, that you can have a look in the, in the KubeCon talk. But basically you can host multiple models in the same Triton deployment or even in multiple GPU deployments. Um, now, for the uh, second ingredient, uh, MLflow. Um, I don't know if you hear about MLflow, it's quite, quite well known. Um, so it's an open source uh, tool that allows you to um, control the life cycle of your model from experimentation, even up to uh, deployment. So I've got a little examples here. Um, uh, with MLflow, 
you can it, it supports this auto log um, code that you can wrap your code uh, for training. It supports most of the ML uh, framework, so like TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, et cetera, et cetera. And then magically, it pushes all the parameters and the results of your training experiments into, into the service so that you can keep track of them. So this is a, an example of the results of one experiment. It's just a, a mix of different screenshots, so don't need to uh, pay much attention. But yeah, you've got parameters, you've got the results of the metrics, and you've got the artifacts locked as well. Um, so those artifacts end up in S3 or whatever you have configured as a, as a um, artifact um, repository. Um, so you have the experiment listed, so you can, the ML engineer can run several ex uh, experiments and then collaborate with other ML, uh, ML engineers to discuss about the results and decide what model is, uh, is worth trying to move to production. So, MLflow has this uh, functionality of registering the model, which means that once uh, you uh, collaborate with your ML engineer and agree that this is the model that we want to try with uh, our user, you can click that button, register model, and nothing really happens. Um, <laughs> because uh, registering a model is just basically telling MLflow Tag this artifact as registered, and then you can go and select transition it to a staging. But that is just a tag in the database that said this model is in a staging or this in production. MLflow has also a way for running your models. But as I said, we wanted to MLflow, uh, sorry, to run models into the same Triton um, deployment. So it really didn't, didn't help. Um, so, now we have Triton, an amazing tool that gathers all the models in search GPU, amazing. And then we have MLflow, who is uh, keeping track of our experiments and the results and uh, allowing our ML engineers to collaborate on the results and decide what model goes to production. But nothing really uh, glues together. So, the magic ingredient, teaspoon of Python sidecar. So, let me recap a little bit. Um, this is um, an example configuration of Triton. So it's very simple. It's, it's actually, it, it was one of um, the um, um, uh, conclusions of our talk on, on uh, KubeCon actually, that this is much better um, from what we come from. Um, but it's still not great because um, if you want to uh, deploy a new model, uh, an ML engineer needs to know what a config map is and needs to come to the right config map, add a new model name, the model will be in the same packet. Um, so that will be it. So that's that's not too bad. But they need to know about config maps, they need to do it. Um, they need to, if you want to deploy the model in a staging to, to do some testing, then they need to know how to like patch the certain customized um, template so that the model only goes to staging and it doesn't go to the base uh, and it is deployed straight away into production, which is bad as he, um, Benny said before. Um, so let's let's do a quick uh, run of the of the flow. So we've got an ML engineer training a model um, with the auto log functionality in ML flow. So everything moves automatically. Um, she has this model, uh, which looks great, collaborate with another uh, colleague and say, okay, so this is the model that we want to uh, deploy. So they click register and then transition to a staging. And this is where the magic happens. So we have the sidecar deployed next to the NVIDIA Triton inference server with this simple configuration here, which is just basically telling where Triton is hosted, where MLflow is hosted, and then you need to care about a state staging and then the specific tag platform Triton. Um, and the tags allows you to deploy multiple Triton inference servers and then being able to route the models to the right services. So you can start deploying inference infrastructure per like, like, like different type of features or recommendations or I don't know, those type of things. Um, and the flow is very simple. So, the sidecar pulls every 
60 seconds, uh, the MLflow API, and it says, like, give me all the models that are registered. And then it knows what it needs to filter. So it needs to filter stage, uh, staging and the particular uh, tags. And then it, it has um, uh, a way to communicate with the Triton uh, container to say what models are loaded, compares, and if there is something different, then load model and load model. And that's it, really. So uh, as a conclusion, um, we saw the, uh, the uh, recipe story. Um, you have the ingredients and, and the steps. So now that's the end of my part. And Bri will cook a little bit so you can see the actual result. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I will train a model and show you how it's deployed um, in our Triton infant server. This is all running in our environment. So, yep. Let's wait. And meanwhile, oh, nice. I still have my servers. Um, OK, cool. So I will um, run a notebook like from start to finish. And, and then uh, we'll see how it actually, what, what actually happens in our, in our sidecar. Um, for reference, uh, let's see. Um, we put forward to one of our uh, instance. Can you make it a bit bigger? No. <laughs> let's see. Uh, it turns out I can. Cool. Of course, this one is not as big. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, for for the. I will use this one, and then we'll see. So right now we have. Um, so I filtered the model name, and we have TensorFlow MLOps demo. Uh, we have two versions. One is already unloaded because I tried today, um, and right now we are at version two. And let's train for version three. You know, I don't use notebook daily, so I hope I press the right button. Yeah, that one. Um, ignore the warning because uh, I don't run this on the on a GPU instance. And this cell is just a bunch of uh, setup, data setup, data set, set um, spreading, and everything. And Let's wait again. Mm. You know, I should have do this first and then show you the the current state. Which is, unlike Jose, I don't have a script prepared. So I didn't follow it. <laughs> this will be pretty rough. Okay, the, um, the setup is done. Um, so that's the model. Um, this is the code I stole from Jose. And Jose, I think you stole it from a tutorial. Yeah. So, okay. Open source. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, this this part is where we train it. Uh, the previous one is just uh, splitting the data. Um, so, um, the important thing that we tell our friends, ML engineers, is that um, these two lines included in your training script and for certain framework, um, Autolog is supported. So, in this case, we're using TensorFlow, and then it's as easy as doing this. And do your training inside this, uh, inside an MLflow um, run block, basically. So let's do that. Shouldn't take too long. I don't know why I do 10 echo anyway. Should be, one should be enough. Demonstration, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's my power, doesn't it? <laughs> So cool. so uh, once done, um, MLflow inject a code that uh, magically upload all the all the models, all the metadata uh, to MLflow. So uh, if we see here, uh, so there's a there's a new run logged, and here we can see um, we can click the run, see the details. I'm probably not gonna dig too much into this. Um, what I'm going to show is 
you will have the model ready here, um, including all the metadata. You can take a look, but once you have the model, you can easily register a model and, and then select a name of the model you want to use. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the existing model name, but you're free to just create a new, new one. Um, register, and now it will be up in the model registry of MLflow, uh, which is over here. And we have version two at the moment. Um, let me refresh that. And now this is on version three, and then we're going to, to try to deploy this one. Um, and as Jose showed earlier, we have a couple of uh, packs that we support to filter the models because I'm not sure if you really want to deploy all your models in MLflow. Um, so in this case, we can add a tag. Um, um, I, would, I believe it was Triton. Okay. And after that, we just um, transition this model, version three, into staging. We, we currently have version two. So once I do this, hopefully, in 60 seconds, uh, the sidecar will pick it, up, pick it up and then replace the model, version two model we have in staging. And let's see. Um, I'm not gonna. Give me 60 times. Do it six times, All right. <laughs> I sure you want you want to see me doing this sixty times. Hmm. Let me just talk about it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, fortunately for us, um, so we we already decided on Triton service, uh, Triton inference server, and then we also have MLflow for experiment tracking or training tracking, uh, but the two don't connect to each other. Um, so, and so fortunately, uh, MLflow has an API that you can use. So it's a very simple sidecar, I would say, um, that the main benefit, even though we call ourselves YAML engineers, because <laughs> as a platform team, we mainly play with YAML. Um, using YAML to add your new models is not as fun. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, right now uh, we have version three ready. Uh, we can check the metadata here. Um, of course, I have to increase the size as well. So TensorFlow ML demo version three, um, all the um, input and output signature, and we can try running um, inference. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, I don't know, EE. <laughs> Let me just do this again. Stop. Yeah, as you can see, it's very fast. <laughs> Canceling it. Hmm. Um, let me copy paste the code. Or I can use insomnia. Huh? All right, so cool. Uh, it's fine. So, yeah, I guess. That's it. Um, that's all I, our ML engineers need to do to deploy models. And yeah, any questions?